So as you can see, we're going to be making this super cute cargo inspired skirt as well as this jean inspired skirt. They're both super cute for the spring season, super simple to make, and you can have so much fun with this project with the amount of things you can do. So yeah, I'm so excited to show y'all and let's get into it. Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Brianna, AKA Hug by Brianna. And as you can tell by the title of today's video, I finally have the cargo mini skirt tutorial for y'all as an apology for how long it took me to get this to y'all. I'm also going to show y'all how to make a ruffle version of the skirt, how to make different pockets, different buttons, whatever you desire, so you can make your skirt as specialized to you as possible, as unique and blah, blah, blah all the above. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with anyone you think would want to crochet a cargo mini skirt slash jean inspired mini skirt of their own. Let's go ahead and get right into this video. In today's video, I'm going to be using Yarn B Soft and Sleek Low Pill Fiber Yarn. I'll be using two skeins for the green skirt and three skeins for the ruffled blue skirt. Each skein comes with 232 yards and this is a weight for yarn. I'll also be using a stitch marker, but if you don't have one, that's totally fine. You can just use a piece of scrap yarn if necessary. I'll also be using the Susan Bates hook. It is a US E size and it says it's a four slash 3.5 millimeters. So I guess whichever one you have, it just depends on your gauge and how loosely you crochet. For decorative things like buttons, I'm using the La Mode button. As you can see, I already used two of them for my skirts that I finished. And then if you wanna add these little things like I did, I got these one inch D rings. It came with four and I used all four on this skirt. And you'll also need a pair of scissors. First, you want to make a slip knot. And then you want to make a chain long enough to go around your hips. Once you think your chain is long enough, you just want to measure it up against your body and I will insert a clip here. So now we have our chain and I'm just going to put it around the widest point of my legs, which are my hip slash butt area. You want to make sure that it is at the widest or most poking outest part of your butt. And you just wanna make sure that the two ends can meet comfortably. It doesn't have to have no stretch at all. This is where mine would be if I didn't stretch it a little bit, but if I pull it a little tight, it does fit around my um, hips and it'll just have a little stretch when I put it on. Make sure you don't pull it too tight or your skirt will be too tight. And now I'm just going to add my extra three chains so we can start doing the extended half double crochet stitch for our next row. And don't worry if it is way too big for your waist because we will be making a waistband later in the tutorial. So now that we measured our chain up against our body, we want to add an extra three chains. So one, two, three. This is just so we can start doing our extended half double crochet stitch. And we will be doing that in the fourth chain from our hook. So these extra three chains should not affect the width of your skirt. So we want to yarn over, go into that fourth chain from our hook. And then we want to grab this yarn and pull it through that fourth chain. Then you want to yarn over, pull through one loop, and then yarn over again and pull through the remaining three loops. I will show you one more time. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, and then pull this yarn through that stitch, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through the remaining three loops. You just wanna do that for your entire chain and I will come back once I finish it for myself. So I just finished my entire first row. We're just going to fold this row in half because we're going to start working in the round for our skirt. Make sure there are no twists or anything. And we're just going to slip stitch to the top of our first extended half double crochet, which is right here. We're just going to go ahead, do that slip stitch. And then we're going to chain up two. This does not count as a stitch, by the way. And then we are going to turn our work. It's very important to turn our work so our seam can be as straight as possible. And now we're going to place an extended half double crochet in this first stitch because again, this chain two does not count as a stitch. And then in the next stitch, we want to place another extended half double crochet. 
And you just wanna repeat that for this entire row. I know that you see this opening, by the way. Do not worry, we will sew it in later whenever we add our waistband. So now we are at the end of the row. We want to place an extended half double crochet in this last stitch. And then we want to slip stitch into the beginning of the row. So we aren't going to slip stitch here, but we are going to slip stitch in this next stitch right here. So I'm just going to place a slip stitch. Now I'm going to chain up two. Again, this does not count as a stitch. So I'm going to turn my work and place an extended half double crochet in my next stitch. And then an extended half double crochet in every stitch for the remainder of this row. So you just wanna repeat this until you have enough rows for your desired length of your skirt. Um, so you would just go around the row with extended half double crochets, um, slip stitch to the top of the work. Make sure you don't slip a stitch into the first stitch, but into the second stitch here and turn your work and keep doing that. Just for reference, at least in my case, each row is about half of an inch. So each two rows should equal about an inch for your skirt. So I will show you that with my measuring tape. So as you can see here, these two rows are just a little over an inch. So just for reference, if I want to make a skirt that is 14 inches long, I will make about 28 rows. And keep in mind that you need to account for your waistband. For me, I want to do about a one and a half inch long waistband. So I wanna make sure I add that into my calculation as well. So. Here is what it'll look like once you do a couple rows. So like this one, um, I am going to show you how to do both a straight skirt and a ruffle skirt. So at this point, you will see timestamps for you to choose what type of skirt you want to make. So first I'm going to continue with just showing you this straight skirt since I mean, I just keep doing the same thing the whole time. So I will be back right after I reach my desired length for my skirt. I just finished my last row. I slip stitch to the top and then I'm just going to chain one and leave a tail long enough for me to weave in later. And then we're just going to chain and pull it all the way through. So this is the base for my really mini skirt that I'm doing. And then this is in comparison to my ruffle skirt I'm also going to be doing. As you can see, I did make this one a little tighter fit, but both of them will fit. This just goes to show how you don't have to have the perfect measurement because it'll still send in in the end. Anyways, this one will just stretch out more, thus probably having bigger holes, as you can see, where this one doesn't stretch at all. This just goes around my body, so it'll look just like this very tightly knit <laughs> together. So now I'm going to show you how to do the ruffle skirt because we're already done with the base of this one. For the ruffle skirt, we're going to chain up two like usual. Then we're going to turn our work, but instead of placing one extended half double crochet in each stitch, we're going to place two extended half double crochet in every single stitch for this entire row. This will make ruffles for you. So I will come back once I complete this entire row of all increases. So now I just went around my entire row and like we usually do, I'm going to slip stitch into the top there chain two and turn my work. I'm redoing that chain because it got a little split. Okay, chain two and then turn my work. And now we're just going to do normal rows all over again. You will not need to increase any more. This is all you need to complete the ruffles. Um, if you did make your midsection longer than I did, it's actually really cute if I just had one row of ruffles too, but it depends on what look you're going for. So again, I will come back once I make my skirt as long as I want it to be. So this is what your skirt should look like once you finished making the ruffles. Ignore the top part because I actually added some more detailing off camera here. But yeah, this is what a finished ruffle skirt 
should look like. It's just like a kind of circle skirt. And yeah, now we're going to move on to how to do the waistband as well as how to make a button and how to make the little belt loops. Um, you can crochet a button or you can do what I'm doing and add a little metal button just to tie it off nicely. So yeah, first things first, let's go ahead and start the waistband. So for your waistband, you wanna start off with making a slip knot. And then this will be the width of your waistband. So like I said, I want mine to be about an inch and a half long. So I'm going to chain about eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then in the second chain for my hook, that's where I want to place a single crochet, which I'll just grab the yarn, pull it through the stitch, yarn over and pull through both of the loops on my hook. And you just want to continue doing that for the entire row. Again, this is a single crochet stitch. Now for our next row, we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and then we're going to place a single crochet in this first stitch. And then now we want to go in only the back loop so we can create a ribbing effect. So here you see there is one loop here, then another loop right here. You want to make the single crochet under this back loop. So just go under the back loop, create a single crochet and do that until you get to the last stitch of this row. And in the last stitch, that's where we want to place a normal single crochet. So we'll go under both loops and create a single crochet stitch. And you just wanna repeat this until your waistband is wide enough to stretch around your waist and to stretch to your hip measurement. So I will show you what mine looks like once it's done. So you'll know if your waistband is big enough for your project. So here is my finished waistband. When I tied off, I made sure to triple my waistband length. So I just grabbed my yarn, went over it about three times just to make sure I have enough for sewing. I'm just gonna grab the main part of my skirt. So you can see that it stretches to my hip measurement, which is what this skirt was made to. And as you can see, it does stretch to it and it does go a little past it if I pull hard enough. So it should be able to get on my body nicely while also fitting my waist and my hips at the same time. So first I attach my yarn needle to this tail by double knotting it. And now I'm just going to fold my waistband in half. Make sure there are no twists when you start sewing, just so your waistband isn't all twisted, obviously. Um, and now I'm just going to sew it to the corresponding side. Let me go ahead and focus it for you guys. There we go. So I'm just going to insert my hook to both sides of the waistband. So as you can see, I'm just going through both ends of the waistband, trying to match up the loops on both ends. So we can turn this into a tube. I'm just gonna do that until I reach the end of the row. And now I'm just going to grab the main part of my skirt again, and we're going to start attaching it. So at this point you can choose which side you wanna be your outside and which side you want to be the inside of the skirt for me doesn't really matter they look pretty much the same but i am going to leave the stretchier side at the bottom and then my first row i want at the top because it is a little less stretchy and i think i need more room for my thighs down here so now i'm just going to grab my tail again from my waistband and then we're just going to insert it to this end of the skirt just like wherever it folds in half naturally. And then I'm going to grab a stitch marker. It's okay if you don't have one, it just makes it easier to stretch it. 
let me also focus it for you. So you can grab a stitch marker at this point and then you just stretch the waistband until you reach the other end. So this end should already be a little attached with the yarn. And then this end, we're going to get our stitch marker. And if you don't have a stitch marker, you can always use some scrap yarn. You can just tie this end of the waistband to this part of the skirt. And now I'm just going to sew both sides together since obviously these aren't the same exact number of stitches. You just want to go into the waistband in any available spot that you find because most likely everyone's waist is smaller than their hips. So you'll probably need to put more stitches here than here, if that makes sense. So let's say if I was just doing one stitch to one stitch, I would just go into let's say this one for my next one. But since I don't have as many waistband stitches as I do here, I'm just gonna go as close as possible to my last stitch. So just anywhere in the waistband, you can get through until you reach the halfway point. And then you'll turn it over, do the same thing on the back. So I'll just show you, you can just watch what I'm doing. So I just go into the next available stitch. Well, just next available space. It doesn't have to be a stitch. Just go into the next available space for the waistband. But for the main part of the skirt, you go into the next stitch. So again, we go into the next stitch, but here we just go into the next available space. Here, next available space, main part of the skirt, next available stitch. So you just keep doing that until you reach half of your waistband and half of the main part of your skirt. This can be a little tricky if it's your first time sewing something with uneven stitches together, but it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. So again, with the waistband, we just go to any available space but with the main part of the skirt, we just go to the next stitch, no matter what. This can differ a lot based off of your hip and waist measurement. So if you have like a really small waist, but you have larger hips, you may need to put more stitches in each available space on the waistband and compare it to what I'm doing. And if your hip and waist measurements aren't that much off from each other, then you shouldn't have to put as many extra stitches as I'm doing in my waistband, if that makes sense. So as you can see, I made it to my halfway point. I'm just going to flip my work and I can also remove my stitch marker at this point. And now I'm just going to, again, sew the waistband to the main part of my skirt, making sure I place more stitches in my waistband than I do for the main part of my skirt, since there are more stitches here than here. So this is what it looks like when I completed the entire connection process. And now I'm just going to tie these two ends together. And then I'm just going to cut my string shorter than it is right now so I can weave it in later. So I don't have this super duper long string because that's kind of unnecessary. But yeah, and now I'm going to teach you how to do a button and how to make the belt loops. So I just turn my work right side out, make sure it stays folded in half. And now I am going to see where I want to place my belt loops. So I think probably here and here. So just make sure they're even. I'm just going to use these to count where I am. So these stitches from my first row of the main part of the skirt. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'll count 13 and then 13 on this side. I'll also just mark where I am here. 
and then 13 on this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And I'll just place my stitch marker right here. So now I'm going to add on my belt loops. So I'm going to take my hook out now, and then I'm going to go under these two loops right here. I'm going to grab my slip knot, pull it through those two loops, and then I am going to make a single, well, then I'm going to make a chain. And then in this next stitch over here, I'm going to go under these two loops again, pull this yarn through those two loops, make a single crochet. Now I'm going to chain up two, turn, and now in this first stitch, again, this chain two does not count as a stitch. I'm going to place an extended half double crochet. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to place another extended half double crochet. If I can get in there, there we go. We're gonna chain up two, turn. Now I'm going to make another extended half double crochet. And then our second one. And then we're gonna do this for one more row. So chain two, turn. Now I'm just going to chain up, well, now I'm just going to turn my work again Try to find the even spot, so probably like right here. Sorry, you couldn't see. And I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the waistband. So here, I lost my loop. So slip stitch here. Go into the next stitch, place a slip stitch and the next stitch for the waistband. And then I'll also just do it a third time. And then I'm just going to chain up one and then just cut a tail long enough to sew in later. So here we have our first belt loop. And then just to make the outside cleaner for now, I'm just going to pull these ends through. And here we have belt loop number one. So as you can see, I just repeated that same step for where I placed my stitch marker. And you can make more. I think I'm only going to do two for this one and I'm going to have my button in the middle. For my other skirt, I did four. So I did one, two, three, four. So it's just really up to you. So now I'm going to teach you how to crochet a button. And if you don't want to crochet a button, this is where you can just pull out your button at this point and just place it wherever you want it. So for a button, we're going to first make a magic ring. If you don't know how to make a magic ring, I will also have resources linked down below to help you out with certain things like stitches or decreases or increases that you may not know how to do within this video if I don't teach you well enough. So first for a button, we need to make a magic ring. That's all the button really is, honestly. So we're just going to grab our yarn, wrap it behind our hand until we make this X. And then we want to grab our hook, go under this first loop, and then grab this back loop and pull it through like so. And now you just want to readjust your hands, grab the working yarn, and then we just want to pull the working yarn a little bit. And then I want to make a chain. And then we're just going to pull this loop a little close, which is the tail, not the working yarn. I'm just going to pull this close a little bit. And now I'm going to place eight single crochets. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we did all of those single crochets over the ring. Now we're just going to pull it closed. That's why it's called a magic ring. And we're just going to slip stitch to our first stitch that we made. Chain up one. Then we're just going to leave a tail long enough for us to sew. And I just broke it, but I can also just use this side. But yeah, that is how you make a button. At this point, I just attached my yarn needle to my button. I accidentally broke this end, but that is okay. This is just to show y'all how to do it. I'm going to find the center, and then I'm just going to sew my button onto the waistband by just going in and out around every loop of my button, like so. It's pretty simple, but since this is the same color, it's probably hard to see. But me personally, I'm going to be adding a metal button on top just so you can see the button more. But this is what I did on my original cargo skirt. So if you want it to be exactly like my first one, this is how you do that. And I'm just going to unattach my needle and we can just weave those in later. If you want to add a button, you can just sew it on here. And yeah. Next, I'm going to show you another optional decoration piece. How to make this little ridge around it because a lot of at least denim things have a ridge or whatever here. It's not difficult at all, so let's go ahead and just do that really quickly. But I'm not going to have it on this skirt. I'm just going to demonstrate how you do it on this skirt. So we're just going to start off with a slip knot. Grab your hook once again. And then we're just going to find what row we want the ridge to be on. So I'll just say this row. Make sure it has the two loops poking out for you to see. And then you just want to pull your slip knot through those two loops. You want to chain up one. And then on that same row, go into the next two loops, make a single crochet. And you just want to go through the two loops for the entire row until you reach the starting point again. I would recommend starting on the side or something though, just in case you don't tie it off cleanly once you go all the way around. As you can see, I'm struggling right here. <laughs> but yeah, basically, I will just single crochet under these two loops. Make sure you're going on the same row or you'll make your ridge crooked. But I'm just gonna do that the whole time around. And as you can see, the ridge is forming here. And whenever you keep going, this is the back and this is the front. So there are two types of pockets that you can make. We have this geometric looking one, and then we just have the square one. Or if you wanna switch it up, you can have a geometric top with a square bottom. The possibilities are truly endless, but, so there are some key things I want you to remember. With the top flap, make sure that when you start your initial chain that you leave a tail long enough for you to sew, especially if you're making the geometric pockets so you don't have to get your end and bring it up here and then sew it onto the skirt. So you'll already have this up here for you to use to sew onto the skirt if that makes sense. And then for the bottom, make sure you leave yarn long enough for you to sew around these three sides, leave the top open because it actually is going to be a functional pocket. Same for the square version. So for this pocket, it's pretty simple. I'm not gonna show you how to make this one, but I will show you how to make the geometric pocket because there are a couple extra steps you need to do for that one. But for this one, it's literally just squares. This is just a one, two, three, four, five, six. This is just a six row by 17 stitches. Again, those three stitches don't count because it is the first extended half double crochet, so it's really 14 stitches, but I made a chain of 17. 
to start it off. And then I did extended half double crochets for six rows. And then for this one, I made sure I had the same starting chain and I did it for only three rows. And yeah, that's how you make a square pocket. Pretty simple, but if you wanna spice things up, I'm going to teach you how to make the geometric pocket. We're gonna make the main part of the pocket and I'm just going to make a slip knot and then I'm going to make a chain of 17 because I want my pocket to be 14 stitches wide and those extra three stitches don't count. Now I have my chain of 17 and I'm just going to go into that fourth stitch with an extended half double crochet like we've been doing. And I'm just going to do that for this entire row. So we have our first row complete, basically making like a little diamond. So I'm just going to chain up two, turn my work, Place an extended half double crochet in every stitch again for this row. So now we finished our other normal row. We're going to chain up two, turn our work, and make a extended half double crochet like usual. And now we want to do our first decrease. So we're just going to yarn over like usual, go into the next stitch, and then we have our three loops on our hook. And now we just want to pull through one loop and rather than finishing our extended half double crochet, we want to yarn over again, go into the next loop. And then we want to pull through two loops and then pull through the remaining four loops on our hook. And then we want to make normal extended half double crochets until I reach my last three stitches of the row. Please excuse the hair, I just took my hair out <laughs> and I keep catching it in my yarn. Okay, but now we're at our last three stitches. We're going to place another decrease right here. And then in our last stitch, we're just going to place a normal extended half double crochet. And that is a completed decrease row. So we're just going to grab my finished pocket. And as you can see here, we have two normal rows and then we have one, two, three, four decrease rows. So this is what yours would look like if you did the exact same stitches as I did. And yeah, if you want your pocket a little more pointy, then you can just do more decrease rows. It will be a little longer though, so maybe only do one row of no decreases. And then you can add an extra decrease row if you want it a little more pointy. But yeah, make sure you leave a tail long enough for you to sew these three sides together. Leave this one open, by the way. And now that you know how to do the decreases, whenever you do the little flap, you just want to do one normal row and then you wanna have two decrease rows. And that's all I did for the flap. And now I'm just gonna show you what it looks like when I sew them on. Pocket placement is totally up to you. Um, you can have the flap as high or as low as you want it. I like mine to have like one row overlap, so about here. And then I'm going to get another pocket that I made. And about right there, trying to make sure they're as even as possible. And I want mine to go a little bit on the flare as well. So I'm just going to get my yarn needle and then I think I'm going to go ahead and sew the main part on first and then I'll add the flap afterwards. Much like how we sewed on the button earlier, you just want to sew on your pockets, making sure you leave the top open if you want them to actually work. I mean, you don't have to make them work, but yeah. And this is what a finished pocket would look like. So yeah, just repeat that for uh, whatever amount of pockets you want. You can also add pockets on the back. Again, it's completely up to you. If you want to be extra like me, I also just attach my yarn to the middle of my flap. And then I just made an extra long <laughs> strip of extended half double crochets just so it can go a little over the skirt because I think that'll be cute for the cargo look. And if you wanted to add these like I did to my skirt, all I did was grab two D-rings. I slip one on and then I slip the other one on. And then I just grab this end and tuck it under that top one. And there you go. 
So thank y'all so much for tuning in to today's video. I hope your skirt turned out exactly how you want it to be, whether it's mini, micro, longer than I made it, because I know mine is pretty small. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was very helpful. Comment down below if you have any questions and make sure you share all of your creations with me because I would love to see what y'all come up with because all of y'all are so talented. But anyways, peace guys. I won't hold you for too long and happy crocheting.